So why did the fish die in the eco movie? Well, let's take a look and see what happens. Here's a quick review. Many of you already know, but this might help you again. So here we start out with a nice pond, and you can see that we have the blue water and the blue sky. And we're assuming that all the fish and everyone is happy in here. And you might recall there are some largemouth bass and there are some bluegills. And when we get into July, uh, the population has just crashed down to zero. So assume now that we're in the happy part of the year where there's plenty of bass and plenty of bluegills. And the reason that these bluegills and the reason that these bass can survive so well is they have plenty of food and they have plenty of oxygen. And where they're getting their oxygen from are these little green dots here, also known as green algae. And as you know, green algae carry out photosynthesis, which trap light energy and release oxygen and make sugars and food available for everybody else. So photosynthesis producers green algae. And when the light comes in, they're doing their thing. And so in order to have photosynthesis, as you know, there has to be a constant supply of light coming in to the environment. And therefore, they produce the oxygen. Now, second day into it, actually the second time frame you get into, you notice it's raining a lot. And what happens is there's a lot of things get washed into the water. It gets very murky, aka turbid, and mixed in that turbidity in the soil, unfortunately, is a lot of runoff from the fertilizer. So a lot of nitrates and phosphates, plant nutrients. And the big one that we'll be discussing here will be the nitrates. And so these nitrates, again, are are food sources for the plants to start growing like mad. And next thing you know, the green algae population is getting out of control. It's getting very, very green. The water is literally green, if you remember walking through there. And again, the term for that is turbid. The problem is now that when the light tries to shine through, maybe on the surface and a few inches down, or I should say a few centimeters down, uh, light's fine. But once you get a little bit deeper, um, there's just not enough light for photosynthesis to occur. Less light in the pond, of course, means less photosynthesis. And without photosynthesis, those algae die. And most things in pond ecosystems, when they die, they kind of settle to the bottom. In this case, all those healthy green algae are now dead, and they've floated to the bottom. I shouldn't say floated, but they settled to the bottom. And when, like most organisms, when they die, they start being decomposed. In this case, it's going to be by bacteria, which are the, generally speaking, the major decomposers in an ecosystem. Now, the thing with bacteria is that they also need oxygen, just like we do. They work much more efficiently when, when they can use oxygen. And so, if there's no green algae left, because they're all dead, and there's less oxygen coming into water, because there's not as much photosynthesis, but then compound that, which is the real cause, is that the bacteria start growing really quick because there's all this dead stuff and they're consuming all the oxygen. Next thing you know, all the oxygen is either used up or so low that very, old, very few organisms can survive there. And of course, that's what happens to fish. In so other areas that might be bigger, the fish can kind of take off and swim away and get, get to areas where there is higher oxygen. But unfortunately, organisms like clams, and if you're in the ocean, things like coral, things that can't move and you're just kind of stuck there, they're, they're definitely stuck and without any oxygen they'll die. So that is it.